the registration process, like the continuing students, you have your cards which can enable you to borrow books. First years, I'm sure the process is on to get your cards. Those student ID cards, they are actually smart, smart cards, which you will be using for the library purposes also. So, and choose, use the library materials, use your lecture, the lecturer's notes. Sometimes most of us give notes, class, they will be resolved, they will be in hard copies. Make use of those ones. They are part of the material that you be required to read, but you need to supplement through the other two ways I've said. And for this one, you need to have more some funding, some funds, because you will be required for printing, you will be required to, to have for the copying and all of that. Again here, for the purpose of materials, have that group approach. Have a group approach. For example, if you have a group, discussion group of five students, I can get material for ESM 101. The other one will get material for Mark 110. In other words, have that group approach to getting these materials. It will be cheaper and effective. The other point was lack of commitment from your student. This is related to lack of focus. You know, at the personal level, you know why you came here. And you need to, to be determined to get that, what you have to get from the university. Plan to achieve what you need to achieve. In other words, that personal push should be there from you as a student so that you attain or you get what you want to have. Have that initiative. You know, as a computer student, do you need somebody to remind you that you had some problem in, say, curriculum or quantitative skills or the computer course? And if you keep quiet without making an initiative, try to find out the teacher personally and interact with him. Like these courses for first years where you have online classes. After the session, try to find some time, interact with the teacher, find out the time the teacher has for you. You can now meet physically and explain to him some or her some of the difficulties you are experiencing in understanding some of the concepts. Look for that person to assist you. There is no problem of you accepting that you are low in maybe expression or in the quantitative skills or in another area. Because once you hear like that, then you can now get assistance. Then you will be who is best in that area. After that initiative to reach him or her to make you reach at the bar. Now, the other Issue will be an environmental distractors. Now, when you're talking about environmental aspects, we have a natural environment and we have a social environment. Now, the natural environment, you're aware, we have uh, rain. Rain can make you, or the climatic conditions in general, can make you to fail or not to get what you wanted to get. What do I mean? Some of us have healthy concerns. We are sensitive to climate changes or climatic changes. Now, when you are aware of that, you are aware that Nikinyashia na ufua kidogo na sumbuka. What you need to do? Have your time. You know, like in, in Kaimosia, we have rains almost throughout the year. Pick an umbrella or a budget for an umbrella. Or, Plan your classes, I mean, uh, plan to attend classes early. There are some of us who wait the 11th minute, and that 11th minute, there is rain. 
and you were just idling in your house. Well, you know, the class starts at, at uh, say, at uh, one. And before one, rain is in your house. What you need to do, have prior arrangement, prior uh, plan to ensure that nothing distorts, distorts you. Have plans on how to take care of your health. Because there are those effects from the environment, like cold, I mean coldness, cold weather, windy, dusty, and all those things. I'm sure there will be one or two who has issues with the allergies. And such individual may miss classes, may miss, may miss exam because of such. But with proper planning, you know you have a problem with your health. You need cold, uh, warm clothing. You need to take care of that, make the proper arrangements. That's for climate, climatic conditions, where we have rain, we have sunny, windy, and all that. How about the social environment? How does the social environment distract you from achieving what you are to achieve? The social environment here is us. You, your colleague, your lecturer, Mama Pima, Mama Boga, that is your environment. You need to attune yourself to the focus as we have talked earlier. Do I need to belong to this group? Once you have realized that group, or that individual, that person, that friend of yours, who is not concerned with your studies, who is not concerned with his or her studies, does not want to attend class. Avoid to be influenced for, by such a person. There are some cases, you know, as deans, we get uh, many reports, where students, you join first year or second year or third year, and you are not at any class. You are cooking for somebody, your boyfriend. Could it be a student here? Could it be a border border fellow? How do you reach that level? How did you start to interact with that border border fellow? How did you become somebody's cook? Your colleague's cook? When you knew that you came for studies. What, what I mean here is that as an individual, be firm, know to what extent you can socialize. Know the people who are who are meaningful to you, meaningful to the sense that they are concerned with your performance. You can have a girlfriend, yes. You can have a boyfriend, yes. But what is his take when it comes to you attending class? What is his take or her take when it comes to you to, when it comes to maybe going for exams? Is he a person who threatens you when you are going to attend class instead of going to attend his or her birthday? You need to have that straightforward. There are some of individuals who, because of maybe where they come from, they want to influence you to do things which may not be really what brought you here. Forming groups of calling others. We have students here. I'm sorry to say this. Even as we have gotten a text messages the tuma kwai number now when you google i mean when you try to find that kumbe mwanafus mwanzako and some of them have given their colleagues they call me now say them in fact some i i got i got a text message that dr marak here psy for them kindly assist me i'm stranded i'm your student now, when I was reading that message, Dr. Maharaja PS4, for then, that's the course I teach. I'm not known as that way. Then I realized this is a number which you, a student shared with the con, conman, and now thought that that's my name. So, basically what I want to say here, let us avoid distractors, 
from the environment. There is a saying that my dress, my choice. And that is an environment which we are creating. As a student, yes, you have that opportunity and uh, freedom to dress the way you want to dress. But not to canvas. We are going to to go we are going to to go to go to we are they want to disapprove God's work. You know, you are wonderfully and beautifully made. And you want to change even the hairstyle. You are black and your hair is yellow. <laughs> okay. There is a time for that. There is a time for that. Because I'm sure if if you have done that and it is your first time, the first week, you will be having a lot of distractions. How cute. All those words, they disturb you. Suppose you just had your normal hair. Nobody will waste your minutes. Even the dress code. We wear for what? Why do you wear? Why do you dress the way you dress? There are days when we can dress the way we want. When you have a date. Isn't it? When you are going to have Mr. Mr. and Miss Calf. You can wear because you are not for competition. But for no more class, why am I going to wear? Why do you wear a cloth or a trouser or even a skirt or a shirt of a a class 8 student. When you go, God gave you muscles and people are seeing everything that God has given you. That is the fact I'm talking of. Please, let us be normal, let us be natural, let us not have those uh, schedules because they just waste time. Uh, we will have talked more but we will have more time next time. But there are some things to avoid. Things to avoid for you to excel in your academic. One, Mama Pima's place. <laughs> Those of you don't know Mama Pima's place, thank you. And don't want, I mean, don't uh, dream to know that place. This Mama Pima's place is where we get Changa, we get Pusa, we get all those nonsense things. If you have been keen, you have been watching news, when policemen and chiefs go around to those Mount Pima's place, when they pour those materials, what do you see inside there? Underpants from those containers. That's the thing you have been drinking. Underpants, sometimes uh, carcasses of animals, even of people. That's the thing you have been taking, and that's what now making you to forget what brought you here. So avoid going to Mama Pima's Mama's Mama Pima place. The other one is roaming aimlessly at odd hours in Jabtu or our nearby towns. Why? I, do you go to photocopy notes at the odd hours? Please let us be. Let us avoid roaming at odd hours, don't disturb our chief school dogs at, at mid, midnight at the Meshiku Haba. If you are doing that, you should have done it at home. Why should you come here to do those? Number three, wasting of time. Avoid wasting time. You came here, you are paid for the time you are here. Your parents are paid for the time you are here. Avoid wasting time. Even classroom, I mean the class hours. Come, Marim, I won't come. Remind me, Marim, we are here. Or oh, we are late for five minutes. I run, I run to class. Now avoid missing of class, missing of lessons, missing of exams, missing of cards. Because if you miss a card, and in fact most people are going to do specials because they missed a card, they didn't do a card. We give almost three cards. 
sit in, take away, another take away, another sit in. And that individual is nowhere. Then he comes, I was in that group. Please. If it's a group work, you will be presenting in class and we will be picking whoever in that group to present. If your name is not in that group, don't come back and say I was in that group. What I mean here, don't miss classes, don't miss lessons, don't miss classes, don't think that if you miss a card, you will just proceed. No. Lastly, don't avoid lecturers of the courses where you have problems. I've seen students, especially what were mathematics, but you know yourself, and I will ask you questions when you are coming for special, I mean supplementary examinations. One plus one is two. Why are you not getting that? <laughs> then Murasem Mwarim, and you think I don't have the numbers of those teachers. I call them. They say, Uyo, Wajan Nai. And I put up a class and I look upon them. So, what I'm trying to say here is that avoid, I mean, don't avoid meeting your lecturers. If you have a problem, just meet them and let them explain to you how best you can grow in that. With those many, many words, I welcome you to the sec first semester of this year. And uh, for the continuing students, welcome to Kafu. You left when we were Kafuko. Now we are Kafu. And uh, that's why we are explaining to you all these things. Thank you. That is deep, huh? Can we appreciate my dear? Just to highlight on what he has said, I remember the case of a student in Kenyatta University. He had cleared the four years and therefore it was time for graduation. He informed the parents and I do have why I think that and so more. So he informed the parents and the parents took the whole village, three buses. Full. Wakifika na ibasha. Anasema na angalia na wana siku kwa graduation list. And for sure he never attended the loss. That sounds like he kept, he was living in Mama Pima's place. Please avoid Mama Pima's place at all costs. Uh, on the same and I am saying this. It, uh, call yourself to a meeting and be a July. What am I saying? Call yourself to a meeting. Interrogate yourself. What you do, your weaknesses, work on your weaknesses to make yourself a better person. The worst enemy is yourself. The person who hinders you from reaching that destiny, it is you. So change. Your past doesn't determine your future. Neither does God use your past to determine your future. It is you to decide. He talked about relationships. And remember the Bible, Jesus Christ was our greatest teacher. We need to learn, learn something from him. He loved everyone, yes. But there were friends who were close to him, which we call the inner circle. We knew there were only three. So interrogate your relationships and find out whether they are adding value to you or they are destroying your life. We may put a car, what we made a class, we will not be here at all. Tomo Akiru Nasem Akaribu, we may pick. The following day, you repeat the same activity. At the end of the semester, I will pick on A, I will pick 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 A, I will 
to meet your lecturers. I think we talked to you and said we have uh, formed discussion forums on every topic where you will be posting your issues, your concerns, and we shall be able to reply them. Otherwise, can we appreciate our Dean School of Education and Social Sciences for the wisdom that they have given us this morning, and I hope you take that into consideration. Next on our program, I want to invite your... And I talk over it. Comrade Power, she is coming on stage, and that is Dr. Jane Bunya, our director QA and MS, to talk to us on academic history. Can we welcome Dr. Bunya? show of hand, first years, second years, second years, third years, fourth years, or the online. Okay, that's good. <laughs> we, the, th um, the third years, second years, and fourth years, we have our firstborns here the first bones of uh, Kafu. You left when we were trending as Kaimosi Friends University College. And you're back when we are now the latest kid on the blog, Kaimosi Friends University. Are you aware? Are you happy? Really? But I can't see the happiness. So for those of you who are here and those who are watching online, let me say I welcome all of you, the, our old students, to the new Kaimosi Friends University. Are we together? Yes, I'll take about 10 minutes of your time, but we cannot do this until we actually put on the new skin, okay? When I say, Sababu, dio sababu unasema yendembe. Dio sababu, dio We can only end Ambele with quality, okay? You know when Ambele? With quality. Thank you so much. So now I've introduced myself. And uh, very quickly, before I briefly speak about what I was asked to present to you this morning, and I feel very honored to stand before you comrades this morning. It's first of all to make you understand why am I having to speak about academic discipline to you. It's because the docket in which I sit 
determines what type of product we give to you, the student in Kafu. In other words, we are here to ensure that your goals are met. And those goals are met in such a way that there are certain mechanisms, there are certain strategies that we have put in place to ensure that that is done. So, the directorate supports your teaching, we support the lecturers to do what they do in class, we also support you during assessment and we support you in learning. Wow, my controller, eh? Okay. In other words, we have to give deep insights into the practice that happens here. Having said that, let me quickly go to why I'm here today. I'm here to speak to you about academic discipline. I'm not going to speak to you about uh, domestic discipline, but academic discipline. When you are in the classroom or in the lecture hall, and before you is a lecturer delivering content to you. So what do I say about academic discipline? Academic discipline is significant because it allows you to set your goals and meet those goals. In other words, academic discipline should propel you to future success. What are the benefits of academic discipline? The first one, you clearly set your goals. Why are you here? Why did you come here? What are, why are you wasting your time on the corridors and the fields of Kafu? So academic discipline will direct you on that avenue where you clearly state your goals. Number two, you set out your vision. You know the goal is the aim. What do I want to be? The academic discipline is of benefit to you because it then gives you that vision. It gives you the dream to feel that this dream can be a reality. You have the aim, you have the dream. That is not enough. A academic discipline gives you, propels you to establish your mission. Your mission is already established, dear comrade. You being here, that mission is already established. If it is a street, it's already lit for you. So it's for you to sit back and now determine what those goals are, ensure that your vision, your dream becomes a reality, and it can only become a reality with what you do, which requires academic discipline. Now, for me, in my docket, which is quality assurance, number one, there's a class attendance register. Now, this class attendance register, I know we know about this. Some of us, the senior comrades, you know about it. The new comrades, you're going to encounter this. But the class attendance register, let me make one thing very clear here. It's not only for you. Dear comrades, that class attendance register is also for us. And I want to give you the power today. I'm giving you the power because that power is bestowed on me to give it to you, to also donate it to you. We mark your physical presence in the class and at the same time, you should mark our physical presence in the class. Are we together? You understand me? I've been to some classes and until I demand for the register, the class reps do not give me that register. You are not intimidating the lecturer. We are only being accountable to each other because we are here for a purpose. As I ensure that you are in class, you should also ensure that I'm in class. And the classes we have for undergraduate is physical presence, face to face. Are we together? When the lecturer may not be available in class, we are all human, we have issues, we have emergencies to attend to. That should be communicated, but it cannot be every day. Do you understand me? 
When it is every day, then there is a problem. Are we together? The same applies to you. You cannot have emergencies every day. If it is, then there's a problem. So this class attendance register is a must. And as I say, there is one for you as a student and there is one for me as a lecturer. And don't feel intimidated. What is the work of that register? When a lecturer keeps on missing classes, there is cause for alarm. You have got your chair of department, you have got the dean, are we together? You have got uh, the registrar, academics, and then you have got the three senior offices. When it comes to matters pedagogy, knock, so that we, we establish what is happening. In the same way, you, the student, you are accountable to your lecturer. If you have to miss your class, please inform, and for a good reason. Are we together? For us to achieve academic discipline through quality. Then let's talk about the regulations of class attendance. There's a regulation. Dear comrades, you're supposed to attend 80% of the classes for you to be eligible to write exams. I want to say this to the second year, third years, and fourth years. There's a student who told me that he had missed so many of the classes and he happened to sit for his exam. You cannot be twice lucky. Are we together? You are here because you have to come to class. Passing exam is not the time you acquire the skill and the competence. You acquire the skill to work, the competence to do what we have trained for only by you coming to class every day. Because every day there's new content that, that is being taught to you. And that content is what is supposed to help you Achieve your aim, live your dream, and be what you want to be. So remember, it is 80%. And this, from this semester, is a reality. Because we have an attendance register, which was um, uh, prepared by the directorate, and it's been sanctioned by the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academics, and by the end of the semester, you'll see your lecturer writing what percentage it is. It should worry you if that percentage says anything less than 80%. So comrades, let's put our best foot forward. We are here because we have come to go to, to, uh, to, to, go to school so that we become what we have to be. Now, Q says something about your behavior in class. Many of us do not know this but your lecturers can hold you to account and actually cancel you off the exam register because you also have an obligation. If you read the Q guidelines, page 37, continue up to somewhere 45, you will know what you did not know. One, we have to be punctual in those classes. Of what benefit is it for you to get into a classroom an hour after the class began? Now, with the new timetable, we interact with you for three hours and only once a week. Comrades, you have to spare time for that lecturer, just that once a week. And the timetable says three hours, and it has to be three hours. However, you can have your own local arrangements with your lecturer, but abide with those. So, lateness is not uh, condoned by Q. Which means, if you have to be absent, please inform your lecturer. For many reasons, the lecturer should understand that you are not in class, so he or she needs to spare time for you, so that you can catch up with the rest. Or, when you lag behind, we understand why you are lagging behind. Um, let me talk about examinations. And I hope even the comrades who are streaming, you can hear this one, because things are changing. Eh? They really change younger, okay? One, the old students know it as much as sometimes they flout that, that, that close. New comrades, you have to sit for at least two cuts. I don't mean the cuts that meow. This is a cut that comes in form of paper and pen. Are we together? 
Don't wait for, we don't even have them here, we don't keep them. So you have to sit for at least two cuts. Continuous assessment tests. Are you with me? For you to qualify. If you sit for one cut, please do not move anywhere near an examinations room because you are an illegal person. And you know what they do with illegal people, okay? So it has to be two cuts, one sitting and another one take home or whichever way the mode of assessment um, determines. However, there's another reader to that. You have to ensure that your marks for cut one and cut two are with the COD before you are cleared to write your examinations. There's a tool which we have devised. I will tell you about it in my final slide. So two things. It's just not only sitting for at least two cuts, but it is ensuring that your chair of department has the marks for the two cuts. Are we together? Yes. And then the next one, okay, examinations conditions. You are supposed to be seated in an examinations room 30 minutes before the exam begins. 30 minutes before start of examination because you have to be processed, prepared for the examinations. And to the new comrades, if you come into an examination room 30 minutes after, you will not be allowed to sit for that exam and therefore you straight away go for, for a supplementary. Is that clear? Do you understand me? 30 minutes before exam begins, and if you try to enter any classroom 30 minutes after start of an examination, you will not be allowed into that classroom because the examination paper has already been opened, it has circulated, we are not sure whether you are still making your notes to come into that class. How do you ensure this? Whenever it is examinations period, Confirm with the examination timetable when your exam is. You can corroborate that, especially for the first years. Corroborate it with the people who are in the same class and course with you. Now, let me say something about the examination environment because from this semester, even the other comrades, our old comrades, you should know that it is not business as usual. We cannot do things the way we used to do, and we now call ourselves a university. You know, we were a college, now we are a university. An examination room should create equal opportunities for all of you in that examinations room to excel. Why am I saying this? I think in the next slide. Let me talk about your personal effects. And please, students, Old and new comrades. The old comrades who are here, please pass this information to your colleagues. You are not supposed to have any of your personal effects. Personal effects in this instance are things like your bags, your, your, your cell phones, your iPads, and so forth. What am I trying to emphasize? Beginning this end of semester, no student should come with a bag to an examination area where your examination is being written. It is wrong to keep those bags in the class. It is wrong for us to go around collecting the cell phones. Let me run that by you again. Your bags do not belong to your examinations class. Those are illegal items. According to Q, those are illegal items. And what I want to say to you here, dear comrades, is that now what we'll do before we could take those phones and we keep them for you. Nobody is going to keep that phone for you. That phone has to be at least 10 meters away from the place where the exam is being written and you will hold no one accountable. Do you understand me? 10 meters from the wall of the room where you're writing the exam. So even if it is a bag, it has money, do not ask anyone. The invigilator, and we will also be there to help. I think the, the, the other students, you see me all the time 
collecting those bags. Now we collect them and store them 10 meters away. And you know this is not a private premise, it is a public institution. So dear students, I will repeat this. Do not move into your examination room with your cell phone because we will take it out there, do not ask anybody. Because also the invigilators will get this information. Are we together? So come with your pen and paper, if it is your graph book, if it is your calculator, that's all you need. And I always tell students, if you have been serious, academically disciplined, you are already good to write that exam. So the penalization you get there is loss of your property. So you can make a decision on that one. And then finally, um, hey, my DJ. Now I'm going to the final slide, which is uh, speaking to us about what you should expect from us, your lecturers. Can we write? Number one, all of us, your lecturers, should provide you with a semester work plan or content distribution. And that should be given to you at least two weeks into your class. Something called a semester work plan. The old comrades, please take note of that, that we are all under obligation to give you the semester work plan. Let me explain what that is, with your permission. In the semester work plan, we divide all the topics of the semester into a schedule. So that semester work plan will show you week one, week two, and three, these are the topics we are supposed to cover. Are we together, students? And after having covered those topics, what is the percentage? Because you have the course outline, we have the course outline. So that semester work plan is a must. And for any class that does not get it, I think you have got a, your academic secretary. Please see that academic secretary so that they can inform my office and the other relevant offices. So number one is semester work plan, which shows when are you going to cover which topic. It is to watch me as your lecturer and you as my student. If the semester work plan says this work should have been covered in week three and you are in week six, you haven't covered that, that work, there is a problem, you know what to do, okay? Number two, you have to get a delivery schedule. It's called a delivery schedule. The delivery schedule is supposed to show you the dates when you're going to sit for cut one and what nature of cut is it? Is it sitting or it is take home? And then the second deliverable there is the second cut. It should clearly show the date and it is for you to note so that this issue of students missing the cut because I was absent or missing the cut because I did not know does not exist. On the delivery schedule, my dear comrades, you are going to have a slot for the third cut. The third cut is for those who have not performed well and you want to up your marks. Are we together? Because in the university we are not in the business of failing you, we are in the business of molding professionals. So on that delivery schedule there should be three and you should negotiate those dates in class and all of you be in the knowing. This is the gist of it. Before you sit for the second cut, you should have got feedback from the first cut. That is mandatory. It's mandatory. So that you know how much effort to put in. In addition, when you get those, the results for your cuts, if you're not happy or you feel, you know, there are certain aspects of the, of the content that you did not understand, please consult your lecturers. But do not go any other time that you have not negotiated. Agree with your lecturer when are the consultation hours. Are we together? I was reminded by the DVC academics to tell you that is academic consultation and not romantic.
consultations. Are we together? So don't try to tell your lecturer you want to see him at 9 p.m., whether it's a she or a he, that's not an academic consultation. So we are encouraging you to say, not only for the cats, even the normal teaching in class, there are certain concepts that you'll grasp, other concepts will take you forever. Please, we encourage you to keep in touch with your lecturers. Keep in touch with your lecturers. Then agree when are the consultation times, go and see them, let them give you extra tutorials so that we can get the best professional out of you. Are we together there? You understand me? We are your colleagues. That's why I always start by saying, comrade, power. We are comrades of different levels, but we all are comrades. So please, please make that interaction, make that academic relationship with us so that we can help you. Then the next one is the student attendance register. Ensure that the register you use is the one from quality assurance. How are you going to know this? There's a column I have signed, and then it is approved by the DVC. How does it look like? It writes week one, week two, week three, and so forth, okay? And then at the end of it, it gives the percentage of your class attendance. So the class attendance registers that are acknowledged and admissible by the institution are those ones having the week spread out, and then down there, there's my signature and my name, and then approved by Professor Kip Kemboy, who is our Deputy Vice Chancellor Academics. And then I'm going to go to the final one, which is the continuous assessment. Please, can you write this if you have a book somewhere? Continuous assessment spreadsheet. I told you that your marks should be with your COD before you write, you are admitted to write your final exam. Now, on this sheet, there is a place showing cut one. Your, your mark will be put by your lecturer. And then there's a column for you to sign, to truly admit and accept that I sat for this cut and this is the score that I got. And then there is the second column, which says cut two. In that cut two also, the, the, the module lecturer or the course lecturer will put in input your mark, but then you sign against it. Are we together? This is to cushion both me and you. The issue of missing marks, the issue of saying I wrote an exam when you truly, got, I, I sat for the cut, when you truly did not sit for that cut. This is the only document because we are still manual, this is the only document that will help us to clear this elephant from the room. Comrades, that's what I had for you. But being quality assurance and a mother to almost all of you, my eldest son is 29, I believe all of you are younger than that. So you are my children too, okay? We are here to mentor you, all right? I want to leave you with wise sayings, which are two for a wise student. You don't have to be great to start. Can you read the remaining part? Let me read that, let me, let me say that again. You don't have to be great to start. Do you agree with me? And this is the starting point. The second and final wise saying is, the expert in anything was once a beginner. All of us who are seated here, your lecturers will tell you, I'm an expert in this, I'm an expert in this. But we all sat where you are. As a first year, as a second year, as a third year, there's no shortcut. Are we together? Can we, those of you who can read that wise saying, can you say it to yourself? Can we? The expert in anything. And I'm saying anything because some of you are here mathematicians, others are linguists, others are everything. So the expert in anything was once a beginner. So you are in the right place and we are here to nurture you with these hands. We have nurtured many more. You are not an exception. We invite you to accept that nurturing. Dear comrades, stay well. We are permanent neighbors here and let's get it right. Academic discipline.
Thank you so much for your time. I'm doing a pushet comrade. I'm doing a pushet from my gun. I'm doing drinks from my hand. Oh, sorry, sorry, doc. The, the, okay. Comrades, the examinations policy, you all have to read it. You all have to read it. I can assure you when the students come for this year hearing because of malpractice, eh, you do not want to see it. And you do not want to be the one. So please, I invite you, read it. If you don't have a copy, go to the registrar's office. Our registrar academics, she will help you get a copy. Read it. You do not want to be a victim, okay? Thank you, Dr. We want to appreciate her this way. Three claps, then you stamp three times, then. So let's go. I have such a talk funny able to kiss my comrade as Sandra. I have to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ali, for the presentation. It was very detailed. She took us through the whole journey from the learning to doing cuts, to examinations, and she was very detailed in every area. She has given us what we expect from you, but also what you expect from our end. Isn't it? And I think you got that. Can we appreciate her one more time? Uh, just to note a few, uh, she talked about class attendance, and I think I have written you a message, especially for students who are online, online learning, our physical presence will be online presence. Online presence, that means ensure that you actively participate. You actively post. Uh, if you have concerns, post. If you have answers, you have given tasks, post. We want to see you uh, being very active on the LMS. And because we have our Dean School of Computing, who is an expert in that area, I want to give him two minutes or one minute to say something on the same before we proceed. Our Deputy Vice Chancellor, Judge of Academics, our Program Leader, Registrar and Colleagues, and our Main customer, Abarzeli. Yeah, for all the interaction, there are two things. One, as you log into the system, the learning management system, it captures your details, the time you log in. So as you interact, you are captured. The details are captured in real time. Took up a model. And then number two, the classes, uh, the instructors of online learning have developed those modules such that at the end of every week, you must have read the material and then the assignment, and then they upload the assignment every week. So it means, for each week, you must go to the system at least once, to the worst case, once. But there is likelihood of visiting twice or three years because you have to read, download the assignment, do the assignment, upload the assignment. So you are being monitored. I'll say so for now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. for the clarification. I really appreciate our dean, Skate. And now that he has mentioned about uh, downloading, of course, each of those lecturers have their specific tasks, but especially for ESM 1.1, we have what we call group assignments. And in the group assignment, you will download, do the activity, then post. And because of that, I will still insist to go back to the 
laptops. Ensure you have a laptop. Not just the smartphone. Because if I require you to prepare to let you frequency card or histogram, you will not draw with your smartphone. So kindly ensure you have the, the laptop. She also talks about cards for, for online. We are also it will vary from lecturer to lecturer, but we have computer marked assignments where you do the card within the timelines that you have been given, maybe 40 minutes. Then immediately you, you join, you, you will go to the next group. So ensure that you are in a group uh, specifically for those courses. Uh, Dr. Tali has talked about examinations are coming into the uh, exam room with illegal items. If I was you as a student, she has told, told you to read the exam policy. Please go and read. You are not, for example, expected to come with forms. But in the past, we have been walking around and picking those forms. And I remember one time, uh, I picked a, a, a student form. Nikawek and Bennett was in governor's hall. Then somebody picked. As they finished the exams, Mungina kind of new form. Meaning he lost the form. So he, when he came to me, I told him to go and report to the registrar. And I knew it is wrong. So he never even went to the registrar. Because in the first place, you are not supposed to come with forms. For those students who come to, she emphasized 30 minutes. If you come late, uh, past that, remember you do a soup, and in soups you will only get 40%. So let's be informed students so that we do the, the right thing. I think that uh, brings an end to her academic discipline. Let's appreciate her one more time for the good work. Thank you, our PMS. Um, Comrade, for that session. Next on our program is our registrar, Dr. Jenny Mbunga, I mean Dr. Jenna Munga, and she has two sessions. She will first take us through the exam policy that Dr. Tara has just talked about, and I hope you'll be very keen and even note down what is important. She will also talk about deferment and resumption of studies. Please be keen. Take now into consideration every word or wisdom that she gives you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Let's appreciate her. Our acting Deputy Vice Chancellor, ASA, the deans who are present, chairs of departments, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I want to speak to you about the examinations policy and guidelines. This is a very important area and I want to believe one that makes most of us quite unhappy. But I have to talk, I have to, talk to you about this. And uh, I'll go straight to what I must speak about. I look at the policy. Why we have a policy in place? One is to ensure that the examination process is fair and that all the students have a level playing ground. So you see, when we teach in exams or we allow others to cheat, and we are silent about this, we do ourselves great injustice. Because that means we are allowing somebody to have a new advantage over us. And that is not right. We also want to ensure that employers receive quality graduates. I'm sure we all know about the unemployment problem out there. And our thinking is, if we want to sell our graduates as an institution, 
they must prove that they are quality graduates from CAFU. I have been particularly impressed when I have gone out on supervision of students who are on teaching practice and a head of a school tells you, this time you brought us only two students, I wish you brought more. Because when you bring your students here, they are very effective, they literally take over the school and they run it. I get the impression that we are producing quality graduates. But quality graduates are in our processes and in the final grades. So we want that quality of the graduate that you want to be reflected in your final grade. When we send you out into the field as a first class student, second class honors student, can somebody see that in you? Proving that you did not cheat the system. You did not cheat your way through. Uh, Dr. Ibunya has already talked about continuous assessment tests, so I may not belabor this, but I want to point out that uh, other than the two continuous assessment tests which are mandatory, you might also have a continuous assessment test in the form of a class presentation and write-up. That means you could be scored. And other than the continuous assessment test, we have end of semester or trimester examinations. And like you have been informed, you are not expected to sit for end of semester exams without having continuous assessment test marks. If you do, like I inform some of us, even if you score 70 out of 70, that mark is invalid. Can you move on? Then I move on to the examination offenders and what is an offense. This is ideally a breach in any of the rules which govern the conduct of examinations. We have been implored to look at the examination policy. I write at that. Get the student's handbook, get the examination policy. Those are two important documents. Make sure that you read them from cover to cover. I look at some of the regularities or malpractices and I also look at the penalty associated with such a malpractice. And the first one is unauthorized material in an examination day and students, we are very innovative, wrongly so. That is how we used to carry some of the unauthorized materials into the examination room. The ladies, we believe if we carry them in that manner, a mediator will not pound on us. Rest assured that we will. Wherever you store that material, we shall retrieve it from you. When you copy, you read, you write on the walls, on your desk. That is an irregularity. When you have a device that permits communication, when you are in the examination room, that is an exam irregularity. For such offenders, we shall cancel your results and we shall send you home for one year. Now, for those of us who are allowed to bring calculators into the example, we can see there are those of us who will hide some material between the calculator and the, the lid that is stuck at the bottom. The ladies are guilty of writing on their thighs as shown. Because you think somebody will not come to look at what is on your thigh. There are those who will write on a piece of paper and see how to fix this on their arm and cover it with the sleeve of their shirt or gloves. They are those who carry phones. 
with knots. And I'm also aware that when we carry phones, there are those of us who have two phones. So when you are reminded to surrender your phone, you surrender one. And you retain the one that has knots. And you tell yourself you are safe. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask that we leave our phones in our rooms or wherever we stay. Do not carry your phone to the examination room. Then we have those who have low necks. And they want to do what is being done in that picture. So please, do not do that. Then there are those of us who might want to walk into an examination room and they have not complied with the fee policy. We will not have any marks. Yeah, then we have that kind of pollution. Which we are also aware happens. So you are with uh, your good friend and your back ready. Can you prepare the notes at my moment of fix? Please share. So when that happens, the two of you are guilty and we shall send both of you home for two years. Because you are guilty of cheating in exams. Then passing off somebody's work as yours is also an offense. That means you've copied somebody's work. It could even be at the, at the point of a continuous assessment test. It is an offense. Then destroying evidence which may be used as proof of an examination irregularity. We have caught up with students, with the Marcellus, illicit literature, on tiny pieces of paper, and because they know that is evidence, they eat up the evidence. So I'm reminding you that in our revised examination policy, that is now an offense. So even if you eat up the evidence, we shall still send you home for two years. We've had a case where a lecturer was hurt because she was trying to retrieve evidence from a student. And the student engaged her in some scaffold and the lecturer was injured, deceased from doing that. Then other offenders are causing bodily harm to invigilators, refusing to write a statement when you are caught, because there are those of us who have also been refusing to write a statement. When you are caught cheating in exams, the expectation is you write a statement. So again, in our revised policy, that is enshrined in it. If you refuse, you are guilty. We send you away for three years. Impersonating or being impersonated knowingly will send you home. I can see that in this forum, fourth year class is the least represented. I want to pray that fourth years, wherever they are, are following online. And the reason I say this is because in my mother tongue, we say the pot breaks at the doorstep. I know most of you maybe have never seen a pot. <laughs> that is what we say. So four years are pots at the doorstep. In April, we came across a four year student who was supposed to have been sitting for special exams in two units that he missed. 
But this student allowed or was contracted by another student to sit an exam for him. Perhaps he was paid. But we say we caught up with this student, a clear S student. Because this unit he was checking on behalf of a friend, he had actually scored a straight A in that course. So perhaps the more reason why he was contracted to sit an exam in that unit for a, a friend. So you can imagine you are in fourth year, you only had two units, special exams, which you are going to sit for and pass and graduate. But because you allowed yourself to be compromised in this manner, you are not graduated and we are sending you home for three years. As we also send away the person you are trying to see to the exam for. So if people will graduate, you are stuck at home. And ladies and gentlemen, when you are caught cheating, and we have talked to you the way I'm talking to you, please do not put us in difficult situations by sending your mother, she arrives there, barefoot, travel from God knows where, and you have instructed her that just go to the registrar's office and plead to have this case dropped. Your mother is not here attending this session today. She does not attend lessons at this institution. So please do not involve your mother, your father, and your guardians in such issues which we are asking you today to avoid. There is bribery, forgery, and so on. And this time around, we are again going to disallow you to proceed to the next year if you have not fulfilled the requirements of your current year. That has been happening a lot. But going forward, we are putting a stop to this. So we shall be ensuring before you move on to a new academic year, you have fulfilled the requirements to proceed. You can move. We may have appeals for remarking, and this will happen if you are convinced that whatever mark that you have been given is not the mark that you deserve. In such a case, you will write to the DBC answer, who will present your case to Senate upon approval, an independent examiner will be appointed to look at your work. And remember, there is